All right, flow, power heads, and getting the right tool for the right job the first time. There's seven major categories of uh, flow that you can add to the tank. They all do something uniquely well, or at least different, mm -hmm. in some cases, uniquely bad. Yeah, so true. understanding what they do and how you can add that types of flow to your tank or your aquascape or even style of reefing is really, really important. Yeah, and on top of those seven styles of power heads or categories of power heads, there's also some other considerations that you should look at when picking the right one for your tank. You know, things like maintenance, battery backup, and a few others that we're gonna cover today. But by the end of today's video, you will have a better idea of what power head is right for you. All right, so rapid fire, here's the seven major categories. The first is a laminar flow, also a gyre, just shoots a sheet of water right across or sometimes around in a circle. Yeah, and then there's wide angle flow, but low velocity, meaning big wide angle cone of flow, pretty slow. There's also high velocity, <laughs> low uh, angle, which means it's gonna shoot all the way across the tank at really high velocity. And then we're talking about fixed speed, so that AC conversation, AC versus DC. And then, of course, the DC options, the adjustable, mm -hmm. you know, like getting all of those random flow uh, <laughs> modes in there. What do they do? Are they even important? And another one is aimable. Does it matter if you are able to point your uh, power head in different directions or stay fixed? And last one, a cordless option. Yeah. Is it real and is it important? All right, so the first category of pumps being those laminar flow pumps, often referred to as the gyre. Yeah, so these types of pumps are uniquely well at creating, like what we said, a sheet of water across the, uh, the tops of corals or across the top of your tank, even turn sideways in a sheet of water that goes in front of or behind the aquascape. But what we're doing here is we're creating a thin sheet of high velocity water that has to go out one way, which means it has to return back the other way. So typically across the top and back along the bottom, but you essentially you're creating these currents kind of like you see in the ocean. Yeah, and so that is why it's called the gyre, is the gyre is like a circular mm -hmm. current. And it's not that any old pump can't do that because they will all do that to some degree. If you blow water that way, it it's has to come, come back, back somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> This does it uniquely well because it does it, it blows it in a little sheet, like right across mm -hmm. the top or back or front of the tank. And when it goes across the top, the water obviously has to come back uh, down below. And because it isn't blowing in a big cone down below, it's actually really easy for it to have high velocity coming back and create those currents. And so that is what a gyre does, but why would I want to use one? Yeah, so the answer to that question is, I mean, you take a look at our 160 right here, and some of our corals are now growing up to the surface of the water, and it's really hard to get flow over the tops of those corals to the other side of the tank. Extremely hard if you're not using a pump that has the ability to make this fine sheet to go over the top, because essentially then you'll end up blasting the face of the coral, and nah, the corals that really don't like that. So. Uh, in that purpose, using that for flow across tops of corals, flow behind thin aquascape backs, flow in front of the tanks to create these different gyres. Uh, the form function of the gyre itself, you just look how long this is compared to all of these other power heads. That just means you're getting a lot more flow in a wider pattern than any of these other ones can do, which is why it does it so well. Yeah, so I'll just like kind of top on that, especially if you're going across the back of your tank, trying to flush out all mm. the stuff that goes behind your rock work. If you leave a little space, I could do this with a normal cone type power right. head, but it only like hit one area. If I do this, you know, mounted vertically and shoot it across the back, now I'm getting most of that area and mm. why it works so well. And again, the primary reason shooting right across the top. So getting flow above the corals, especially if uh, your tank is fairly shallow. There's other one other thing though. Yeah, and this is a big one for those of you who like a low profile and hardly any cords in the tank. Because this pump does very well at shooting uh, flow across the top, it means it doesn't suck water in like a lot. It doesn't create this vortex and suck in air that shoots air bubbles across your tank. You can actually mount these pretty high, which means you're no cord in the tank. Yeah, so it's not that there's no cord in the tank. It's Almost. just that you can't see it. Yeah, it's right? really close. So this is mounted, in fact, even on the side of, uh, uh, of the tank, instead of having pumps like right in the middle, mm -hmm. you have this mounted up super high so you can actually see through most yes. of it. And then this cord kind of travels vertically uh, or horizontally across the side 
and you really can't see it's even in there. So not cordless, but a well-hidden cord, mm. uh, which means that aesthetically, you know, you get to see the tank instead of all of the pumps. So laminar flow, really, really great for creating that sheet of water, whether you want it to horizontally, vertically, as well as hiding the pump itself. All right, next major category, wide flow, low velocity. So this really hits on the like, yeah, it's 2,000 gallons an hour. Mm. 2,000 gallons an hour just isn't 2,000 gallons an hour. No. Because if you have a one inch pipe shooting 2,000 gallons an hour, it's pretty high velocity, it's gonna shoot all the way across the tank. Mm -hmm. If I had a six inch pipe, not so much. Yeah. Right, so that's what we're looking at here is pumps that are really high flow, they might be 2,000 gallons an hour, but they're spreading it over a wide area rather than shooting it really hard. Yeah, and there's some easy ways to identify if a pump is wide flow. One, some of the boxes say it right on there, like this, this one from Tunes, it says wide flow. Uh, but you can look at the nozzle on them, and you're specifically with these two different Tunes pumps here, one obviously looks like that small one inch pipe that water is going to be shooting through and the other one looks like a wider wider cone meaning i'm going to get that wide flow pattern for it and there's some distinct uses for each of those you can see it right here there is a cone where it's shooting all the water through High so velocity. it's very much i'm just going to shoot it as far as it possibly can whereas with that wide one that he just mentioned uh, you can see there's actually no even grade on it to focus it and it's just shooting it out in a wide angle because there isn't a really long cone on it now, that's not the only way that you can tell because some of them are deceiving like i would say the vortex are kind of somewhere in the middle even though they don't have that cone on them but they fall somewhere right in that sweet spot right between like wide wide angle and narrow angle but something like these uh, CJ pumps also, you can see on them, they don't have anything to hone it in. It's just a mm -hmm. propeller and they're super wide angle pumps. So that brings up the question, why would you want a wide angle flow, low velocity pump? And there's three reasons. One is I don't have a six foot or four foot or eight foot, these super long tanks. So I don't need a narrow beam of water to get water all the way across of them. I've got a smaller tank and the wide angle will get across my tank. And part two, it won't damage my corals. Do you see some of the aquascapes? The corals are right next to the edges. These pumps are mounted right next to, on the edges of the tank. And that leaves little room for flow between my pump and my coral. And if I had a narrow beam shooting directly at my coral, they're not going to like it. Yeah, that even applies to the back of the tank too, mm -hmm. where I'm you know, trying to get flow either angled downward or in between the corals or shooting forward. Even though there's a six foot tank this way, it's only two feet front to back. Mm -hmm. And I got corals all over the place, so I don't wanna just blast them. That wide angle, low velocity flow will get flow surrounding the coral and allow me to get flow in the right spots without you know, really just blasting them and blowing all the tissue off. Yeah, and speaking of the corals not blasting them, this works really well with like euphilia and those soft tissue corals that obviously don't like a whole bunch of flow, but at the same time, you just kind of want to get them to move and get water through, you know, the different parts of them, the fleshy bits, in which case a wide angle flow is much softer on the coral. Yeah, so, you know, you're looking for those 30, 40, 50x turnover, but it isn't one size uh, fits all. Mm. Every pump does the same thing because that's just not true. I'm looking for a way to get that kind of turnover and get all the benefits of gas exchange and getting rid of all those toxic uh, oxidants out of the coral and getting nutrients into the coral, getting well, blowing all that flow over its surface without you know harming the actual tissue. So with softies and euphilia, nailing it with super high velocity probably isn't the best solution, but getting gentle, low velocity, wide flow in the same gallons per hour probably is. All right, so the next category, the inverse of that, which is narrow angle, high velocity. Yeah, so it means exactly the opposite of the wide angle, low velocity in that I'm narrowing the angle of my flow, like that, through that one inch pipe to use your analogy, but that same 2000 gallons per hour is now speeding across the tank. Obviously not something that's gonna point directly at corals, but it is used as primary flow in uh, like SPS dominated systems. 
in most cases you'll see these mounted on the sides of the mm -hmm. tank and aimed at each other, right? They create that turbulence, they create uh, the, the currents in the tank and the primary sources of flow. A Couple of options, again, you can see the tunes. They have that cone which focuses the, the flow here. Uh, the Vortex, super, super popular. Even though they don't have the cone on it, they have a propeller or prop design that actually shoots mm -hmm. it that way. Another option is a gyre. It's a little different uh, flow format, but it is high velocity. It's hitting all the way to the other side tank and mm -hmm. returning. And then a little different because most of those that are actually put on the sides of the tank is uh, the wave from Neptune. This one often goes on the back of the tank and then kind of tilted in so they aim at each other from the sides. Now this gets the pumps off the side of the tank. This is something you could do with the tunes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but different options, high velocity and traveling all the way across the tank as well as creating the turbulence. So again, that brings up the question, when would you want a narrow angle, high velocity flow? And there's a few uh, reasons why you would choose this. One, you predominantly see these types of pumps in those SPS jam-packed dominated tanks because you're trying to get the flow across a tank, smashing into each other to create this turbulence, this chaotic type uh, currents in the tank that you can kind of uh, also adjust in many cases. Uh, but these are your primary flow drivers in those types of tanks. Yeah, so again, one on each side, super common, you've all seen it, the primary sources of flow. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also see it uh, sometimes in unique uh, solutions as well. I, in my case, I put them on the bottom, both in the 750XXL here, as well as my 360 at home, they're bare bottom tanks, and we use that high velocity flow shooting across the bottom to keep them clean keeps all the debris uh, suspended where the filtration actually removes it, the filter sock, skimmer, everything, and just keeps the tank clean. You can also do it behind the rock work. You know, I don't want a wide velocity in many cases. If I'm shooting it right behind the rock work just yeah. to get flow back there and flushing everything out, you know, when they hit, not only will the two uh, inter intersecting pumps hit in the back, but then water will flush up from the back towards the front, getting flow into areas which is actually really hard to get to uh, otherwise. So specifically though, SPS dominant oh, yes. tanks, other than the primary source, this is how you get that high velocity turbulent flow that matches that super bright lighting that we put in here and helps those corals metabolize and get rid of all those oxidants and prevent them from bleaching. All right, so the next category of pumps is often referred to as fixed speed or AC pumps. And you can tell them pretty quickly because they just have a plug that you plug in, you turn it on, and it's just on all the time. Yeah, so that comes with a fixed flow rate or fixed uh, speed, like we said, in which case, when you plug it in, it's only got on and off functionality. But you can also find these things in that wide angle, you know, low velocity flow or narrow angle, high velocity flow. The biggest decision factor in getting one of these AC or fixed flow pumps comes down to cost. Yeah, cost, they are definitely cheaper than their uh, DC cousins. And there are some DC options out there that are in a similar price range. However, they often break in that 12 to 18 months because they have really tight tolerances and you know, DC stuff just tends to break more frequently in AC, just partially because of that. So often your AC cousin here is so simple, the tolerances are really loose, which allows it for less maintenance. And this pump may actually outlast your tank itself. <laughs> uh, they just generally, you run them in some citric acid, clean them, and they work like Come new back, for yep. many, many, many years. So note that. The only real difference here is that they're on all the time. Yeah. I mean, you just flow is the exact same 24 hours a day, unless you yeah. use a wave maker. Yeah, and that's what the way I would do. If I was going to choose a fixed speed pump or an AC pump, I would find a digital timer or a couple digital timers, and then I'd just smartly use these pumps because they are going to be on or off. So I'd put one side on for a while, the other side on for a while, maybe several hours, and then both on for several hours and just vary that up through the day. Easy to do with a very simple, cheap digital timer. One thing to note is you can use those wave makers too that kind of turn them on every minute mm -hmm. or so. Generally, I don't do that. I like to leave them on longer to create currents in the tank and uh, different flow patterns. But if you have a tank that has wants a lot of flow and you actually don't want uh, that much turbulence, those little pulses actually work pretty well. 
All right, so the next category of pumps here is obviously the DC or adjustable flow pumps, where the flow is varied throughout the day and probably makes up 80 to 90% of what most reefers are using these days. Yeah, and that, that's an attractive point of the DC pumps for the most part, is that I now have the ability to change all of the flow dynamic multiple times a day, rather than just on for a few hours, on for a few hours, and what have with the uh, fixed flow pumps but there's also a slew of different types of programs and things that I can share. Like if I like somebody's flow pattern, I wanna apply it to my tank. These, a lot of these options have the ability to bring in somebody's flow pattern, make your own, share it with the community, and really just play around with the gear. Yeah, there's a couple really specific uses you could do too. I mean, you'll see like those nutrient transport modes yeah. that uh, Ecotech has, but I use some of those things because periodically just tons of flow all the pumps on at max gets all the stuff and is suspended back in the water flushes it off all the surfaces and it goes down the overflow and then removed by the filtration so i wouldn't necessarily want that all the time because right. i'd be blasting all the corals <laughs> but you know what a couple of times a day to just get all that stuff suspended again mm -hmm. and a lot of times the corals will actually capture that stuff as food and then the inverse of that, you can get some really cool programming, you get kind of nerdy with it. <laughs> and as the light goes up, you can have the flow go up with it. Mm -hmm. Why would you want that? Well, in many cases, you'll see the faster rates of photosynthesis that come with higher intensity lights actually produce a lot more oxidants uh, or toxins to the corals as well. They have to free themselves of it. And the only way to do that is get the flow to pass through the boundary layer around the coral mm. and allow that tissue to get rid of all those oxidants and toxins. So as we get higher and higher flow or higher and higher light, higher flow that matches it, get kind of nerdy with it. But there's a lot of really option, or options here using the different pumps to get varied flow. Yeah, and so then it comes down to at the end of the day is you know the control itself. So you have some that have Bluetooth and app controllability like the MP10s, 40s and 60s. You have some that have a control box like the gyre here where I can set a program for various set points throughout the day and have it change and do all kinds of things. And then you have Ryan Speed here, which is three knobs to change the flow. You could call me the dinosaur. <laughs> I, I, I actually happen to, I actually really actually like the Vortec control the most, yep. but in many cases, just being able to walk up and change with a knob, uh, the ability to do this, fits a lot of people's yep. like, time investment they want to put into it. So the tunes controllable ones, obviously the easiest to do and they actually have a little cord that you can connect multiple ones with and mm -hmm. then they'll start feeding off each other either in sync or anti-sync to do opposite patterns really really easy to implement all right so the next category of pumps has actually been around for a long time but hasn't been used that often it might be the next evolutionary step in what we'll call aimable pumps yeah, so aimable meaning I don't have a fixed spot, the pump doesn't move. These things are fully adjustable or some to some degree uh, slightly adjustable, but I can actually choose where in my tank the flow goes. Well, so like unlike, uh, there's some that don't do it at all like the Vortex and these are, you know, those primary high velocity flow pumps. Uh, and then there's other ones like the gyre here that you can aim the sheet of water up and down to some degree. You can't really aim it off here to the right or aim it off here to the left. But then there's pumps like the Tunes and the CJ pumps that are designed specifically for this almost a full 360 degree angle of rotation. So I'll go through a couple of them here just to give you an idea. They have the like puck type uh, mm -hmm. uh, power heads, which allow you to swivel them just a just little slightly, bit, uh, yeah. not a whole lot. Uh, it's like the AI pump uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, Reef Octopus makes one. Yes. Uh, and then also there's a CHA. It's kind of like on a, like a little stick. It doesn't go every direction, but you can get some pretty good pretty use good. out of it. Uh, the, uh, the, wave uh, the wave pump. Yeah, it kind of rocks a little bit. And mm -hmm. so you can turn it just based on the magnets as well as uh, get a little bit of angle out of it based on uh, kind of that rocking function. Again, the vortex are kind of fixed. You really can't uh, shoot them anywhere yeah. other than straight out. And why they're off in on the front of the tank shooting, blasting at each other. But the king of uh, adjustable <laughs> flow, no question, is the tunes because 
uh, between rotating it uh, with the magnet and then rotating it within the like socket here, mm -hmm. you can get full 360 every single direction. I, in fact, I could shoot it straight down, I could shoot it straight up, I could shoot it straight out, I could do really any angle possible. And in this case, with a wide flow or intentionally narrow, uh, high velocity, but you know, getting the flow where it needs to go. And that brings up why you would use these types of things. And that is, you know, I have very specific spots in my tank where I need to get flow. A lot of times we identify those as dead spots where detritus or, you know, spots where you can see a coral that's not really moving at all, so hardly getting any flow. But I can now change the direction of my flow in strategic ways where I can deliver that flow to those areas, kick up detritus, get that coral the flow it needs. And uh, that's really the major benefit of these. For me, the evolution was when uh, the folks over at WWC, Josh specifically, said this isn't really about 50x flow or 100x yeah. flow. It's about getting flow where it needs to be. So I can provide all that flow up front and feel good about I got 50x or whatever it might be. But if I look in the tank, I can see very obvious dead spots. I can <laughs> see that in between the two sections of an aquascape, that it might be 2x flow. <laughs> and so why does that coral there suddenly get 2x flow where the ones up front get 40? And why does this one not grow where this one does? And now we know why. Mm. Uh, and so in that case, it was all about getting flow where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. A, you can just see it where detritus builds up and you can just put flow down there, but also just logic. You know, you can see behind, uh, if, a, if I had flow pointing at my hand, I know full well it's not going through my hand. So you can <laughs> see it in the tank as well where the aquascape is. So you can use pumps like this mm -hmm. to be able to put it down the bottom, on the top, angle it towards the bottom, really anywhere to be able to get flow where it isn't. All right, so the next category of pumps is unique to just one singular pump. Yeah, so this is the cordless category. Not 100% cordless, because there is one on the outside. We're talking about inside the tank, the MP10s, 40s, and 60s. These are the, currently the only pumps on the market that do this, but really it's a matter of what your display looks like inside and if that display needs to be without cords for your uh, eyes only, these are the pumps for you. This is my pump for me. It's an aesthetic thing oh, yeah. that's unique to you. So you can pick for yourself, but uh, I often use the Mona Lisa. It's a piece of art is an <laughs> analogy here. In your house, you have this beautiful piece of art uh, that you have put in your house. Now, if I had that Mona Lisa, would I want a bunch of pumps on the inside the picture with a bunch of wonky cords? Or would I want this clean looking pump uh, on the side of the frame and a cord coming out of the side of the frame? For me, it's this. Uh, and the big piece of it is because of those cords. The cord isn't just a cord. It's so like irregularly shaped. Uh, that it just has this wonkiness it to out. it that it draws looks your eye. really ugly yeah. and draws the eye, like you said, yeah. in the tank. Whereas this is clean and just fits in there really easy. It's really easy to clean, uh, keep clean as well. It just looks, for me, a lot better in the tank. One specific other thing ah. is if you put it on the back yeah. of the tank. If you paint your tank, if you paint the back of your tank black like a lot of us do, and you put these pumps on the back of the tank, when you go to when you just walk by or glance at the tank, unless you're looking really, really hard, you cannot see these pumps. Black on black just disappears. No cords in the tank. Now I just have a box with unobstructed side view, front view that I don't see a cord. So we've done this in 60 cubes before. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done it at my house. Uh, with I got a tank that's four feet wide and almost six feet long, and they're all in a peninsula on the back and hidden. You can't see right. any of the pumps or cords or motors. So if you're going to put your pumps on the back of the tank, this is definitely the most aesthetically appealing, like most hidden pump, and it'll definitely make the tank look sharper. So those are different styles of pumps. You probably got yours narrowed down, but there's four critical considerations that apply to all pumps, regardless of which one you chose, starting with a battery backup option. All right, this is not the kind of thing that most people should think or would think about when they're thinking about their pumps, but you should. Oh yeah. When I say should, 
Absolutely 100% you should. <laughs> uh, a power outage will happen to you at some point in time. It's what happens then. Mm. And a power outage, what happens is you're going to lose uh, flow, light, and heat, and all kinds of different things. But it's the gas exchange yeah. which is going to kill everything fairly rapidly. And how fast or how much time you have between that power outages uh, is going to define whether or not you have a two year tank or a 10 year tank. So, thinking about that, power outages in flow is actually one of the biggest things, or battery backups in flow. Yep. I would never ever buy a flow option for any tank that doesn't have a method of backing it up. Now there is one type that applies to all of them, even if it doesn't come in the box, and that is? Yeah, so we did some testing on those UPS battery backups, your computer battery backups, and we found that yes, they do work to keep your flow going, depending on how much power draw those uh, power heads of yours are using, but they only work for a short period of time. Even the heaviest ones we've tested, about five to six hours max on them. So that's why there are battery backup options for these, these specifically DC powered pumps that last much, much longer, upwards of like 80 hours in some cases. So the cool thing about those UPSs is they automatically turn on. Yep. So when you're, you could be sleeping, you could be at work, the power mm -hmm. outage, and it'll automatically keep that uh, power head going. Yep. Unlike if you had a generator where you have to go start it. Uh, and in most cases, your power outage is probably only going to be 12 hours or so at mm -hmm. the most. Uh, most of us don't run into multiple day things, which a uh, generator is a better option for. Yep. Uh, but like you said, those UPS things, super readily available and easy to use, but the smaller ones ran about three hours. And I think the best we saw was maybe eight yep. hours. Yep. And then they run out. And that's brand new. If they've been running for a year, it's probably significantly less. Mm. Now, uh, the reason they don't run that far is because they're turning AC power into DC yeah. power in most cases. Inefficient. So yeah. find yourself a DC powered pump and with a battery backup. There's a bunch of good options out here. Probably the best in, the, in that same test we tested the uh, uh, MP10s on a Ecotec battery backup lasted 80 hours of continuous flow and it automatically turns the flow down to a very specific set point so you're not burning a bunch of energy you don't need. Let me say that again. 80, 80 hours. hours. Yeah, and you can actually get it longer because the app will allow you now to adjust what speed mm -hmm. you want the pump to run at. And I don't necessarily need it to be at 100% because okay. I don't have any lights or anything else going on. I just need gas exchange. So change it all the way down to 20% and maybe get even more than 80 hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is multiple days at this point where I don't need to worry about gas exchange in the event of a power outage. And then there's you know battery backup options like the ones for the gyre here. We haven't tested that one specifically for how long they run, but it, they do have an option for it and you can just, it hooks right up and anytime the power goes out, it automatically takes over. And then there's the tunes, which is a really unique option. Oh yeah, I like this options. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the tunes actually takes a step in, says, well, you know what? Batteries are a commodity item. They're everywhere. Why should uh, tunes market up in Germany and then USA and BRS and everybody? when you just go to Batteries Plus. That's <laughs> uh, true, so choose what, your size. What they do is they sell a little, uh, I think they call it a safety connector. Mm -hmm, yep. You plug it into the tunes pump, and then when the power goes out, it automatically goes to a battery that you just bought at Batteries Plus, and uh, you know you can get the like get a different ones, size. Small ones. Yeah. You could get a, a battery that probably runs weeks with this <laughs> pump if you want, or a really small one mm -hmm. that will run just a matter of hours. But in this case, you're not paying all that markup for batteries. Now, the only downside to this is like, whereas the uh, Vortec ones comes in this really clean, nice mm -hmm. mountable case and instantly just plugs in, super easy to use. This one, I will have to go shop for a battery. I will have Charging. to go get a trickle charger mm -hmm. and it's kind of out in the open, the wires are wonky, but it adds a total different level of flexibility. But in any case, remember this, if there's one thing you heard today, remember this one, it's a power outage will happen to you. The most important thing in that is flow and setting up an option when you set up the flow is the best way to avoid it, not become one of the people that had a failed tank because of it. Another critical consideration when you're getting into these pumps that uh, you're probably not even thinking of or thought of is the maintenance, not only just the effort of maintenance, but the ease of maintenance and your likelihood of actually doing the maintenance based on how easy it is. There's some options that are harder than others. There's some options that are super easy and quick, but you need to like think about this when going into your pump. 
So most people are definitely not thinking about how hard it is to maintenance something when they're buying it. Yeah. But you should. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. With the, the tunes pump, uh, the pump and the cord and everything is right in the tank. And that means that when I want to clean it, I have to remove the pump, the cord, everything which means I have to unroute all of the cords to be able to do that or never make them clean, never zip tie them, never mm. you know, bracket them to anything, or I'm gonna have to go cut it all apart every time. And if I do that, that means I'm never gonna do it. <laughs> uh, and so making it easy means you'll actually do it. And why that matters is because a dirty pump puts out often less than half yeah. of the flow that a clean pump does. You can so see if you, it. If you bought a 2,000 gallon an hour pump, it might only be doing 700 gallons an hour if you don't maintenance it. And you can definitely feel it, see it. And in this case, you know, with the cord and everything, it's just a lot harder. Even if you clean it right at the tank, meaning I bring a five gallon bucket mm -hmm. and I run it in some citric acid, I now got to leave, you know, six, seven feet of slack that's, you know, just kind of wonky behind yeah. the tank. Uh, it's just a consideration you should think about. And one of the things that we found, uh, another maintenance part, especially that part of if you don't maintain it, you lose flow, is, you know, these gyre type pumps. So if you maintain them and if you're ready to maintain them properly, these things will put out a great amount of flow constantly. But we do found that they, uh, because of the amount of moving parts and little pieces that uh, go into these things, uh, maybe twice a year, I've got to actually like take this thing completely apart, get, get it brushed, get it clean, put it all back together, and you run into the same thing. It's got a cord. I can do this at the tank every so often with a bucket of citric acid and get it clean enough, but you're not getting it back to like its 100% flow capability, uh, especially when it gets super gunked up. So that's another one you got to take into consideration is not just how easy it is to get out of the tank and clean, but all of the moving parts and the things you have to disassemble and put back together to maintain it. So I think Randy would be nice when he said twice a year. Uh, <laughs> for the gyre, I would say that Quarterly. best, I'm probably doing it every month mm. or every other month. I'm definitely cleaning it every month, letting it run in that citric acid, but I'm probably exploding it and taking it all apart yep. every two months to make sure. And you can kind of watch that with your like uh, power outage draw on your uh, mm -hmm. Neptune uh, Apex or any other controller that monitors power consumption mm -hmm. uh, because what actually happens is it gets uh, clogged. You would think that it would use more power, but it actually uses less. Mm -hmm. uh, so as less flow is coming out, it consumes less power and you can actually see it. I saw it specifically with the gyre in this tank where we spent a whole day trying to perfect the flow or blowing yep. bubbles in yep. and trying to get it perfect. And then I came back a month later and it wasn't doing anything like we had done that day. And it's because the you know, flow had slowed down significantly in just that month. So, you know, the alternative to that is again, the vortex over here. So now the motors on the outside of the tank, the cords are on the outside of the you tank. Never have to move They're them. all like wired and neat and in their place and you never have to touch them. You may never ever take that apart. Whereas I can just hot swap this part out reach in, grab it, pull it off. I could go clean it right there. Or if I had a little bit of foresight, I could actually get another one of the wet sides and just hot swap it right out there, drop it in the citric acid, come back tomorrow and it's clean. So maintenance now every month, uh, I just swap out two heads and it takes me about 14 seconds and <laughs> I'm done. So because it's so easy, it means that you'll do it. And it means when I'm looking for my 4,000 gallons an hour, I'll actually get it. Next critical consideration, placement. And we alluded to this earlier, but for me, it comes down to like an aesthetic appeal, aesthetic appeal in that, you know, if I have a peninsula tank, if I have a room divider tank, or if I'm walking around in the, from my uh, kitchen to my living room, I have a pump that blocks one pane and it's kind of an eyesore. So considering placement and where you can put these things, whether it's high up on the tank, so like a gyre where I can actually see that pane or even those ones on the back, even better if that, uh, like the vortex, when the pump disappears in the tank, I can actually start to see more of my tank and gear is out of my mind. Yeah, so again, those aesthetics, you got your Neptune waves that can go in the back mm -hmm. and be angled in, the tunes that can really do anything. You know, really think about how you want your tank to look and the viewing points that you're thinking about. But more than that, yes. this is the piece about getting flow where it needs to go. I think you can literally look at your aquascape and predict where the dead spots Easy. will be. Easy. So the old way of doing it, which is throw one pump on both sides <laughs> and call it a day, 
will not be the way that you see this going forward. We're gonna solve dead spots and it's really easy. You can just look and see where there's obstructions to the flow and it will almost certainly be there. So, you know, think about pump placement and how you can solve dead spots and your tank will thank you. All right, of course we have our go-to pump, the one that we personally use all the time. Yeah, mine is the MP Vortex, the MP10s, 40s and 60s. My main reason for choosing this pump, and I've chose, chose this pump on almost every single tank I've ever set up, I just do not like a single cord in my tank. That one does it for me. Yeah, uh, I can understand. I think a lot of people agree. In fact, uh, the Vortex series of pumps, the number one uh, pump that you guys are picking up, and not by sales, because this is a pretty expensive pump, it's actually by units sold. Yeah actually outpacing much, much less expensive pumps, just because I think there's a lot of reasons between the battery backup, mm -hmm. maintenance and stuff. I will tell you there's one reason that I use it above all else. Uh, there's a cord piece and whatever, but I've been doing this for 17 years now. I know <laughs> myself, I will not maintenance these. Mm -hmm. I will not take the pumps out and maintenance them until they stop moving. Guilty. Uh, it's just the way I am. <laughs> uh, you can chastise me if you want, but this I will do. I will swap these out, which means it's better for the tank, it's better for the fish, it's better for the corals, and I'm a better reef keeper because it's easy and I'll actually do it. Now, a couple of exceptions to that. Yeah. Of course, we're no longer looking at just flow at the sides. So find those aimable solutions to create, uh, to stop the dead spots. Mm -hmm. Also accepting there's instances where I actually want flow that goes over the top. So it's not about a brand here specifically, it's about understanding how you want to use flow in the tank mm -hmm. and then picking the best option that actually solves that. And if you wanna see any of these things, you can actually see them over here on the bulkresupply.com website. Mm -hmm. But if you wanna see how we did flow in this tank, including some graphics and actual settings <laughs> of how we created gyres and turbulence and chaotic flow, we explained it in detail and you can sign, find that right here.